have been noticing some strange things that have been happening in my husband's house ever since I got married to him. My name is Gloria and this is the story. My marriage is just six months and I haven't gotten any peace of mind. Every night when I sleep, I always have a nightmare. Sometimes I would find myself in a forest tied to a tree screaming for help or I would be running from a mascard with a long rod in his hand. Countless of times, I would inform my husband, but he would say I shouldn't worry, that it is due to what I was thinking before I slept off, but I know it wasn't. There was just something strange about my dreams. A few weeks after we were married, I got pregnant. I was so happy when I got the doctor's report. I was on top of the world, and I couldn't wait to tell my husband when he returns home. I got home and already found my husband sitting on the couch. I was surprised because he said he would be returning home until 9 p.m. Honey, are you back? I said. Yes, the meeting got cancelled so I came back to spend some time with you, he said as he hugged me. Well, thank you, but guess what? I said with so much joy. He looked at me racking his brain but couldn't guess. Honey, I'm pregnant, I said jumping up. Immediately, his mood changed. Are you serious? He asked, yes, babe, look, I handed over the reports to him while he quickly glanced through it. I'm so happy right now, babe, I said. I don't even know what to say, he said with a smile. Are you joking right now? What I want you to do is gently carry me to the couch and go into the kitchen and prepare a romantic dinner for my unborn baby. I teased him. He did not even waste any time. He did according to what I said. After the dinner, my husband gently carried me to the bed. He was caressing my tummy and saying some funny words to my unborn baby. We got to the room. I was not feeling sleepy, but he urged me to sleep so as to give my baby enough rest. I agreed also and slept, but not long after I dozed off, I had a very bad nightmare. I found myself in a forest, lying on the ground. I looked around. I saw nothing but bloodstains everywhere. I tried screaming for help, but my strength kept draining every time I wanted to scream. I am weak. What is going on? I tried standing up, but my legs were weak. Also, I couldn't move. What's happening to me? I was still trying to fathom what was going on when suddenly the masquerade appeared to me. I was really scared. I managed to shout for help, but no one in there was there to help me. The masquerade was laughing hysterically and his voice kept suffocating me. I can't breathe very well, but one thing I noticed is that its voice sounded familiar, but from where? Immediately I woke up screaming, my husband came out from the restroom with speed. What happened, honey? Why did you scream? He said. I just had a nightmare, I said, panting heavily, but immediately my husband placed his hands on me. I felt a pain in my stomach. Ah, I screamed. What happened, honey? He asked. As I, he asked, I couldn't say a thing again because the pain I was feeling in my stomach was so much. I kept hitting my tummy to indicate what's happening and before I knew it, I saw blood stains. I looked at my husband who quickly carried me from the bed into the car and drove to the hospital. We got to the hospital in a jiffy and the nurse attended to me. I was given some treatment before the pain subsided. My husband was sitting next to me. Different thoughts were running through my mind, but I kept hoping it shouldn't be what I'm thinking. The doctor came in with his stethoscopes round his neck. He greeted my husband. Thank you, doctor, my husband replied. Mrs. Gloria, how are you doing? He said, examining my eye. I nodded in reply. Mr. Joseph, please see me in my office, the doctor said to my husband. Doctor, please, what happened? Anything you want to say, please say it here, my husband said, and I agreed with him. The doctor looked and shaked his head. Sorry, ma, but you had a miscarriage. I couldn't believe my ears. Miscarriage? How come? I grabbed the doctor's clothes. What did you say, doc? 
I said in pain. My husband was preventing from tearing the doctor's clothes with the way I gripped it. No, that can't be possible, I screamed. Calm down, ma, the doctor said, but it is like he doesn't know how it feels to lose a pregnancy. Don't tell me to calm down. Honey, I understand your pain, but you need to calm down, my husband said as he sat beside my bed. Two days later, I was discharged from the hospital and we went back home. My husband was trying to cheer me up, but I was deep in thought. I was still trying to fathom how everything happened. It was like a dream to me. After a series of thinking, I later took my mind off it. Three weeks later, everything was back to normal. I no longer thought about the pregnancy anymore. I, I went to work and came back in the evening and sometimes I got to touch to prepare dinner. I later complained to my husband one evening. Honey, you think we need to employ a house help? What for? He said in a harsh tone. Well, most of the time when I come back from work, I'm always tired to prepare dinner for you. And so, did I complain to you? Said my husband. But don't bat me anything. In fact, I already lost my appetite. He said and went into his room. I was surprised. What did I say wrong? Just to employ house help? I said and cleared the table. I went into the room to meet him. He was busy on his laptop and any time he sees me, he would shut it down and I won't see what he was doing. Honey, is it because of what I said that's why you refuse to eat my food? Huh? I said. I have told you I don't want any third party in our marriage, said my husband. Okay, I'm sorry, I said, caressing his beds. I'm sorry too, he said and stood up with a laptop. Where are you going to? I asked him. I need to finish my assignment, but why can't you do it here? I said. No, it's confidential, he said and then left. I watched as my husband walked out of the room with the laptop. He must be hiding something from me, I thought to myself, or is he cheating on me? If that's the case, I will soon find out, I said, and later lay on the bed, though I didn't sleep, thinking and waiting for my husband to come back to the bed so we can both sleep together. But imagine, this guy didn't come back at all. I later slept off and when I woke up, it was morning, yet my husband wasn't on our matrimonial bed. I stood up and stretched my hand. I went to the bathroom and took a shower. I got dressed and then went to the living room. To my surprise, my husband was on the couch, sleeping like a log of tree. He was even snoring. His laptop was right on the table and it was still switched on. This is my chance, I said. I peeped over the couch and checked him. He was still sound asleep. Immediately, I tiptoed to the laptop and clicked the key enter, which displayed my picture. I was about checking the folders, suddenly I heard a voice. What are you doing? I was startled. My husband was awake and he quickly took his laptop and shut it down. What are you doing? He said again. Hmm, honey, you didn't shut it down, so I wanted to help you, I stammered. Listen very carefully, woman. Stay away from my laptop. Do not shut it down for me, okay? I can tolerate anything, but this laptop do not come close to it. He said and went inside. I was really surprised. Truly, he was hiding something from me. I prepared breakfast for him, which he refused to eat. But after a series of begging, he later ate it. It was almost 8 a.m. and I was running very late for work. I couldn't even finish my breakfast and I had to rush to work. Luckily for me, my boss was not yet around. I was really brooming over the scenario, but what happened at home, something is very wrong somewhere, I thought to myself. My friend Mary noticed my mood. She came over to my office. I was not a type that told people my family issues, but right at that point, I needed someone to confide in and that person happens to be my friend, Mary. Mary has been my friend since childhood. She's trustworthy and we have known each other for the past seven years, even before I got married. I don't see anything wrong in confiding in her. Babe, what's wrong? I have noticed your mood this morning. What happened? She asked. Mary, can I trust you with something? I asked her. What happened, babe? She said as she sat down on the chair opposite mine. 
uh, there have been something strange and suspicious going on in my marriage that I don't understand. I said and she frowned her face, thinking about what I said. What is it, my friend? Tell me, she said. And I explained everything about the laptop and the house girl issue to her. Mary didn't take the house girl issue serious, but emphasized on the laptop. Are you for real? Don't you know the tactics of women you can use to check what's on the laptop? She said. I don't know how, I replied. Between me and you, it is like your husband is cheating on you, but do not allow us to jump into conclusion yet. See, I will give you a drug that you will use and put it in his food this night. So when he sleeps off, you understand? She said, and I nodded my head in response. Later that day, she gave me a drug. I was not really convenient about it, but I needed to know what was going on. I prepared dinner for my husband. My husband was in his room as usual with a laptop. Quickly, I brought out the drug and poured it into his soup and shook it all together. Honey, dinner is ready, I said, walking into the room. Okay, I will join you soon, he said as he quickly shut down his laptop. He came to the dining table. I was already eating and he quickly dig into the food like an hungry lion. And before I knew it, he already dozed off. Well done, Mary, I muttered as I went into the room. But to my surprise, I couldn't find the laptop. I searched under the bed, checked the wardrobe, but couldn't find it. Why is the laptop, for God's sake, I asked myself. I was confused about the whole situation. When I came to inform him that dinner was ready, he shut down the laptop and came to the dining. Within some seconds, how come I couldn't find the laptop? I brought out my phone and dialed Mary's number. God, and she picked up, for God's sake. Babe, can you believe I can't find the laptop? I said in a whisper. How come? Didn't you know where he kept it? She asked, but... I was not in a mood for answering any questions. See, we will discuss tomorrow, I said, hanging up the phone. The drug I added into his food only lasted for just an hour. And right now, I had turned the bedroom into something else. So I quickly arranged everything back before he woke up. I came out ground in my teeth as I couldn't find the laptop, but to my shocking surprise, my husband was awake and the laptop was right in front of him. I almost fainted. I was asking myself some rhetorical questions that I couldn't answer. How has the laptop been with him the whole time? Did you bring it to the dining table and I didn't notice? Why did you drag me? He asked, shutting down his laptop. Became, I froze. My mouth became heavy for me. I was feeling uneasy. God, what did I want to say? I won't repeat myself again. Why did you drag me? He said, facing me. Mm, honey, I wanted to arrange our bedroom so that it would be different from before. I stammered. You haven't answered my question. He stood up and came to me. My legs were literally shaking. You see, dear, I wanted it to be a surprise. That's why I'm sorry. He chuckled softly and kissed my forehead. When he went to the room, I was relieved he didn't suspect anything. The next day, I was in a hurry to work to explain what happened to Mary. I just got to work as early as possible, but Mary hadn't arrived yet. I saw some of the co-workers whispering to one another. They wore a sad face on. I was curious, so I called one of them and asked what happened. And she said, Madam, we got a news. Mary is dead. Madam, we got some really bad news. Mary is actually dead. I almost fell to the ground. If not for the help of the other workers who came to my rescue, I was still doubting. How did it happen? I still spoke to her yesterday night. I asked. According to her co-tenants, they said she was screaming and being chased by a masquerade. She ran out of the house, but before the neighbors even asked her what was wrong, she was knocked down by a car. One of the workers named John said, Hot tears rolled down my face. Why has death done this to me? Why has it taken away my friend at this time I needed her the most? I was taken home by John. I couldn't concentrate at work, losing a loved one. And it was so very painful and a very bitter experience. John dropped me off in front of my house. I walked into the house in an awkward manner. I unlocked the door, went into the house and dumped myself on the couch, sobbing. 
why God? Why have you allowed this to happen? I said, buried my face into my palm. I sobbed. After some minutes of sobbing, I dozed off on the couch and I had a dream. I found myself in the same forest I once found myself before I lost my pregnancy. There were bones littered on the ground, masquerades. I heard the voice echo in my ear. I stood up scanning the whole place in a second. I could see from a distance the same masquerade that pursued me running after a lady. The lady was shouting for help, but the masquerade kept chasing her, laughing hysterically with his rod in his hand. I ran after them with all my strength, hoping I can save the lady, but before I caught up with them, the masquerade already killed the lady with his rod. I stopped seeing what happened. The masquerade was laughing hysterically again. Its voice was ringing in my ear. This voice sounded like the voice I do hear every day. Suddenly, the masquerade turned to me with fear. I jotted up from this couch. What happened? A voice asked. When I turned around, it was my husband smiling at me with his laptop in his hand. I jerked seeing him standing in front of me. I was really scared. He sat on the couch near me with the intention of placing his hand on me, but I stood up avoiding him. I rushed into the room and locked the door. Something is wrong somewhere. Why am I seeing this masquerade? Mary shouted masquerade before she got knocked down by a car. It was this same masquerade that chased me before I lost my pregnancy. And one thing about this masquerade is that its voice sounds familiar, but from where? I was racking my brain really hard, trying to figure out the answers to my problem, but not even a single clue came to my mind. My husband knocked on the door instantly. I was frightened. I stood motionless in the room, thinking maybe he would stop, but he didn't. Honey, why did you lock the door? He said. Hmm, sorry about that, I said, and opened the door for him. He came into the room smiling. I was curious. Honey, why are you smiling? Just guess, he said. You know what? I'm not good at guessing. I said, okay, you know the other day I left the room and you asked me where I was going to and I said I needed to finish an assignment which was confidential? Yes, I remember. The assignment is actually a contract and guess what? I have been given the contract. He said, jubilating. I'm confused. I don't understand what is going on again. Wait, so you mean you have been doing assignments all this while? I asked. Yes, what else do you think I was doing? Mm, just kidding, I said. So, do you know the best part? We are moving away from this apartment into a new one. Really? I jumped up, hugging him tightly. This was good news and it called for a celebration. I said with a smile, yes, but that will be later because we are moving in right now. He said, I was happy. This was wonderful. I said and started packing, but he told me not to. New clothes are already in the new house. Just let us go, honey. He said, we cut walked out of the house into the car. My husband opened the car for me to hop in. I was really excited about the whole situation, forgetting my predicament. The new house was just what was in my mind. After some minutes of driving, we arrived at this two-story building. It was very beautiful. Just by mere looking at it, one can tell it was worth millions of dollars. I did not bother asking him how he got the money to secure an expensive house, like since he said he just got a contract. This house was fine. This house is amazing, I said with amazement. You haven't seen anything. Let us go inside first, he said, flipping the car keys in his hands. I was just jumping around with the way I was excited. He opened the door and, oh my goodness, the decorations, it was beyond what I can explain. My pictures were already on the walls. There, I was surprised. How come? How did you get my pictures here? I asked. Hmm... That's easy, honey. Let us go upstairs and see the rooms, he said as he held my hand and we both walked majestically upstairs like a newly wedded couple. There were like five rooms on a row, making a total of ten. The ones downstairs were also much, but I didn't count. I was checking out the rooms one by one. They were well furnished with a TV set in each room. I got to the last room as I was about to open it, my husband shouted on me. 
honey don't go in there you can enter any room in this house but this one don't even come near it he said why i asked looking at him suspiciously hmm you see this room it isn't well built and it is still under construction are you sure i asked yes honey let us go check out our matrimonial bedroom he said pushing me to the room we entered into our bedroom and it was really big and the bed was very large and soft i examined everywhere and this house was a dream come true to live in i said in my mind so what do you think he asked to be honest honey i love this place i said he was really happy and as he heard me say that he hugged me so passionately okay can you please do me a favor walk into the kitchen and prepare me a delicious dinner food i'm really hungry he said trust me what i want to prepare for you is going to blow your mind i said and went straight to the kitchen running it was as if my husband had been living in this house before i opened the stores and to my surprise there were lots of food stuff in it oh my goodness i will enjoy myself till i die i said to myself and i took some ingredients i needed in making a special and delicious food for my husband within some minutes i was done cooking and i set the table and just out the food my husband was watching a football match he was then seeing his team losing the game i wonder why men love watching football matches like this honey dinner is ready i said he looked at the table to confirm but he seemed less concerned about it what was in his mind was the ongoing match i will join you after the match he said fixing his get guess i will join you after the match he said fixing his gaze back on the match but you said you're hungry i know but this match is very important he said so you mean the match is very important than your wife okay no problem i said knowing that he would leave the match and join me on the dining table he looked at me surprisingly and came to the dining table why would you say the match is more important than you you know you are my wife and i love you so much nothing is more important than you he said and pecked my cheeks he sat down and took a spoonful of the food that i prepared jeez he shouted what happened i said this food is very delicious he said with a smile i'm already blushing thank you i said we continued eating our food knocked up to five minutes a message popped on his laptop he paused for a moment looked at the time it was just some minutes past seven he looked at me in a very suspicious way excuse me please he said and took his laptop and went upstairs now this time i know there was something fishy about my so-called husband I watched him as he walked upstairs with his laptop. Now I must say there was something very fishy about him and that laptop. My friend Mary, whom I ought to confide in, was dead now. I was just left alone again, back to square one. I didn't have anyone to talk to or to confide in. I will surely figure out what's going on, I said to myself. I finished eating and cleared my table. My husband didn't come back to finish his food or the football match. I went upstairs to the room, but he wasn't there. I could hear him taking a shower in the bathroom, and his laptop was right on the bed. I quickly rushed to click the key enter, and it displayed my picture, but unfortunately for me, there was a password. What can be his password? I said to myself, racking my brain, but I couldn't figure it out my husband was already finished bathing i quickly lay on the bed and pretended to be sleeping he came out of the bathroom with his towel around his waist he looked at me and took his laptop he unlocked it but i was unable to see what was there after some minutes he shut it down and left the room he kept doing this every night and wouldn't return until 3 a.m i was really suspicious about this moment where was he always going Two weeks later, I was feeling very sick. I was vomiting and sleeping during the day. Seems like my symptoms I had before, so I went to the hospital for a checkup. After some series of tests run by the doctor, it turned out I was pregnant again. 
i was so happy this is something that i was hoping and looking forward to for all this while i collected the report from the doctor with excitement as soon as i came out of the hospital i brought out my phone to dial my mom's number it had been a while since i heard her voice but as i was about to do that a little child just came to me madam i was sent to tell you to be very careful and prayerful about what you do ma and make sure you pray before sleeping tonight the child said and left i was just looking at the child as he ran across the road to buy some things i was shocked at what the child said i must pray before i sleep my mind went straight to my mother i dialed her number and explained my encounter with the child she didn't even waste any time she told me to put a call to a pastor immediately i called the pastor and after explaining everything he gave me a psalms to read before i sleep getting home my husband was sitting on the couch waiting for my arrival I began to feel uncomfortable immediately I sighted him. Honey, welcome, he said, hugging me. Thank you, I replied. How was the test that you did and ran at the hospital? He said, dropping the cup of tea he was holding. My heart skipped for a bit. How did he know about that? How did he know I was at the hospital? I didn't inform him about going there and I didn't tell him everything about me visiting the hospital. How did you know I was there? I asked him suspiciously. Well, I passed through the area today and I saw your car parked there, he said. Okay, it is just malaria. The doctor had prescribed some drugs for me to use, so I said and went upstairs. My mind wasn't at rest. What was going on? I felt I was in danger. I quickly brought out my Bible opened the verse the pastor gave me after i finished reading it i began to pray passionately just as i was told when last i prayed i don't even remember the last time i prayed like this all my clothes were soaked in sweat i rounded up my prayer and lay on the bed and dozed off i had another dream or should i say a vision i saw myself lying on the floor in the same forest again I was hearing the voice of a lady shouting for help. I stood up and saw the same lady I saw before. The masquerade was running after with his long road. I started running after them, trying my best to save the lady, but the masquerade killed her just like before. I was panting seeing what happened, but like a surprise to me, I saw the face of the lady lying dead on the floor. It was my friend Mary. I was shocked. How come? I asked myself. Suddenly, the masquerade turned to me and removed his mask. It was my husband. My husband looked at me. He was proud of what he did and he put his mask back on. He laughed hysterically and dragged Mary into a place that looked like a shrine. Everything transformed back into our new house. I could see my husband sleeping on the bed. Suddenly a message popped up on his laptop. He stood up and checked it. I walked behind him to check what he had actually been hiding from me. When I got behind him, I saw him chatting with a person named Maraki. The person texted, "You haven't fulfilled your promise. I just need some time. The lady has been suspicious about my movements." My husband replied, well your last sacrifice has expired the person texted back but i still offered my cow to her baby and her friend and the group gave you wealth just as you requested the group wants you to show up now most especially the leader he wants to know what's taking so long for the next sacrifice the person texted back my husband shut down his laptop and stood up tears rolled down my cheeks so my husband is the one responsible for my miscarriage and also the death of my friend mary no wonder he never allowed me to come close to his laptop i was so devastated i followed him to where he was heading to i was so shocked to see him enter the room he told me never to enter why is he going into that room i asked myself well i entered the room i was behind him it was a shrine I was really scared. Seeing some skulls tied to the wall, my husband spread his hands apart and recited some incantation. Suddenly, some people in black appeared. The whole room shaked immediately. 
Amaraki, what happened? It's time you renew your wealth. A person named Bujaja said, seems as if he was the leader. I know, but I need more time, my husband said. Time is not on your side. Listen, your woman whom you want to use has found out your secret. You need to go now and bring her, Bujada said, laughing hysterically. Oh my God, so he wants to use me? I shouted in fear. You need to bring her. She's sleeping now. It's your chance, the same man Bujada said. No problem, I will even add interest because she's pregnant. I will use both her and the child, my husband said, and all of a sudden, they burst into laughter. How can he do this to me? He claims to love me, so he was actually deceiving me all this time. Well, I woke up from my dream by a person's tap. Fearf Fearfully, I opened my eyes and it was my husband standing right in front of me. Fear gripped me. I wanted to shout, but he seized my voice before I could think of anything. He brought a white substance, read some incantations into it and blew it on my face. Immediately, I felt so dizzy and sleepy at the same time. I tried my best not to sleep, but the power was too strong for me, so I gave in. When I opened my eyes, I found myself in the shrine. My legs and hands were tied like a cow about to get slaughtered. The same people I saw in my dream were standing, reciting some incantations. The whole shrine was shaking. I didn't know what to do. These people seemed very powerful. It is time for the sacrifice, Banda, Bujaja said, handing over a knife with a black cloth tied to its handle. My husband collected it with joy and moved closer to me. My husband, please, can you tell me what I have done wrong, that I deserve this from you, I said with tears in my eyes. You really want to know why? He said, and I nodded my head in reply. You ladies are always after a guy that has money and not poor man. You remember when I was still poor and I asked you out? Do you know what you did to me? You insulted me and embarrassed me in front of everybody, saying you can never get married to a poor man like me who has no future. Do you remember? Now that I am rich, I asked you out. Didn't you think twice? You didn't think twice. You accepted my proposal, but you never knew the source of my wealth, he said. Please, honey, I'm very sorry for what I have done to you, babe. I take back everything I said to you. Please, I pleaded with fear. My dear, it's too late, my husband said. No, please, I'm sorry. I would do anything, I said in tears. The only thing you can do for me is to let me use you to renew my wealth, my husband said. I can see he already made up his mind. Mary, so this is the end. Look at where your life ended up just because of your love for money. God, I know you can hear me. I know you know that all this is as a result of my past behavior. But Lord, your word says the times of ignorance God winked at. Father, if you can save me from this, I promise to preach to people how you have saved me and preach to them to turn away from all their sinful ways. But Father, if this is the end, have mercy on me. Let me enter your kingdom, I said in agony. Immediately, my husband raised the knife. A light of ray just appeared into the shrine. I couldn't see anything, but I was hearing them shouting, Fire! Fire! Where? I said, trying to see what was going on, but I couldn't see a thing. The light was so bright that I closed my eyes. Suddenly, I noticed a hand carry me, but I didn't see anybody. The hand carried me within seconds and dropped me when I opened my eyes. I found myself in front of my mom's church. Jesus, I shouted, running into the church. The service was still going on when I entered. The people were scared. They thought I was a mad woman. I ran to the front of the altar, rolling on the ground, shouting, Jesus, I thank you. I kept saying that for some minutes before the pastor tapped me and that's what had happened to me. I explained everything to him while the whole congregation was listening. When I finished, they all shouted, Jesus is Lord. Some fell on their knees crying for their forgiveness while others were rolling on the floor praising God. Ever since that incident, I repented from my sinful ways. I never saw my husband again. 
I started going to church frequently. I later found another man who married me and to the glory of God, I have given birth to three children. This is all because of the love that God had for me. All glory belongs to God. This is the end of the story. So please tell me what are the lessons that you have learned from this story? Personally, I think the biggest lesson is the love for money is the root of all evil. The love for money is the root of all evil. So tell me the lessons that you've learned from this story. I would like to hear your comments in the comment section. And please support our channel by subscribing and watching the videos and commenting. Please, this really, really helps up the channel. So please help us by growing this channel so that we can bring you more insightful and more lesson-oriented stories. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. For now, bye.